role players of Justin Krubaugh and Daniel Thorpe, which should be a good match. As both of these players compete a lot here at our local PCs, and a lot of them, I mean, both of them do pretty well, usually top cut almost every event. Justin's done a little bit more nationally, so let's hope we get a good matchup here for round three. As you see, we have Daniel at the bottom of your screen and Justin at the top. Okay, so here we go. Daniel at the bottom of the screen with the team of Tepu Coco, Tepu Fini, Garchomp, Arcanine, Mimikyu, and Snorlax. And at the top of your screen, I Magic Carp Justin Krubaw has Braviary, Garchomp, Kartana, Arcanine, Tepu Fini, and Snorlax. So looking here. They both have the Snorlax and the both have Feeny and Arcanine. So that could be an interesting mirror match and also Garchomp. So depending on those Garchomp item choices, those could be a very hard matchup for both of those players. Coco looks like it's in a good shape against Justin's team, but I'm sure he has ways to take care of it. As Braviary is weak to Coco, Feeny is weak to Coco, but his Arcanine could have Snarl. His Garchomp obviously probably has Earthquake. Yes, and both these players are 2-0. Here in round three, most likely every stream will be until the later rounds will be XO players until we get probably to the last six and seven round. Daniel already locked in, and Justin has about 10 seconds to make his last team choice. And here we go, we're gonna get right into game one of Swiss round three here at the Illinois Midseason Showdown. As we see Justin sends out Braviary and the Arcanine. Daniel leads with Tapu Coco and Snorlax. So Tapu Coco not in a terrible spot here. Gonna be the fastest thing on the field getting its electric terrain. And popping its electric seed to raise its defense, which is different, not something we see so often. And Arcanine gets the Intimidate. Off on Coco and Snorlax. Only essentially gonna hurt the Snorlax is Coco is usually a special attacker, but can't carry Wild Charge. So here, if you're Daniel, you can expect a Tailwind from the Braviary most likely, or not. Justin brings it back into his Kartana. Coco goes for a Thunderbolt straight into that Braviary slot, and Kartana takes about. 55%. Arcanine gets a will o -Wisp. It does happen to connect for Justin onto Daniel's Snorlax. Snorlax is not going to like that burn. We do see a curse raising its attack and defense immediately and decreasing its speed by one stage. Not a bad turn there for Daniel. Got some free damage on the Kartana. So if he wants, he noticed that the Thunderbolt is a two hit KO on that Kartana. We don't know the Kartana. It's probably not Assault Vest if it, if it took that much damage from Thunderbolt. As we do a detect, see a Detect come out from Justin to protect that Kartana for this turn. Coco does go for the Thunderbolt into that slot. As we see Arcanine Flare Blitz on Justin's end into Daniel's Coco. And since that defense boost, it only takes less than 50%. Snorlax uses Facade. Ooh, with that burn, almost picked up the KO on the Arcanine. And Arcanine procs his Citrus Berry to cover a little bit more health back. So that's a good turn there for Daniel. I think he might have surprised Justin with the facade there. The Snorlax doesn't mind the burn there. <laughs> Maybe he was expecting that, so now he's got two relatively healthy Pokemon on the side with Coco being the fastest so we could probably knock out both Mons here with a T-Bolt whatever one he chooses he just kinda hope he doesn't T-Bolt into a Protect again but Kartana did use Detect last turn so it is likely that Justin wants to switch that out into something which he does into the Snorlax 
So we see both Snorlaxes here on the field, and Snorlax is probably going to take this. No, Thunderbolt goes into the Arcanine, picking up the KO. Daniel made a good read there, expecting a switch, and then another facade goes into the Snorlax. Does 50% proccing the, let's get the, get the berry. I have Papa Berry, again, for another round on here on the stream. Both Snorlaxes were carrying the Eapapa Berry. So Justin, we've seen his mons. He could bring the Braviary or the Cartana back in here. You probably are going to see, I want to say, the Braviary. Both are in bad position against the Coco. So whatever one comes in will probably protect and take some sort of damage from the Snorlax to, into that Coco, possibly for Justin to knock it out. As we do see the Cartana come back in. As you see, Daniel's Coco putting in a lot of work here. That being the fastest thing on the field, doing healthy amounts of damage and boosting his defense with the Electric Seed, which something different, but it seems to be working out for him here after eating up that Flare Blitz from Justin's Arcanine. As he still have four pretty healthy Pokemon left. As we Cartana detect again. Tabu, Cuckoo, Tabu Coco goes for the Roost. Taking all of that health that he lost back from that Flare Blitz. It's another thing we don't see every day. We see a high horsepower coming in from the Snorlax. But again, eats that up. As you see another facade coming in. To the Snorlax doing around 50% again. So Daniel taking pretty well control of this match. See if Justin can turn it around as he we see a quick forfeit here as Justin felt that he had no chance of coming back and thought that he saw enough. So he's going to take the 4-3 loss at a quick forfeit in my opinion but he's a good player. He knows what he's doing so hopefully he's got a plan to come back from that game one loss and make sure there's a game three in this Swiss round. But for Daniel you got to think that he's going to stick to the same thing as he only saw those two Pokemon, Justin. He didn't know what he, Daniel brought in the back or nothing. So, Daniel in a healthy place, but Justin going to come up with something different to beat that lead. And maybe not bring the Braviary, since Braviary did not do much. Okay, here they are, their teams once again. Daniel at the bottom of your screen. Tapu Coco, Tapu Fini, Garchomp, Arcanine, Mimikyu, and Snorlax. Justin Crewbaw, I Magic Carp at the top of your screen, has Braviary, Garchomp, Cartana, Arcanine, Tapu Fini, and Snorlax. As we know, last game, Justin chose not to bring the Garchomp and Fini, which I think he might switch and bring the Garchomp this turn or this game because I feel like the Snorlax was a problem and he might get some good damage off in that Snorlax as long as he doesn't get up another another curse and that's if his Garchomp is holding the Groundium Z which a lot of them do at the current state of the meta so he needs to get rid of that Snorlax maybe not burn it this time as we did see the facade coming out As Justin is locked in and ready to go, made his mind up for the game two to hopefully turn his luck around. As Daniel is here deciding if he wants to stay the same path and keep his way at what uh, he wanted to win, at the same as he did game one. And uh, we only saw his t first two Pokemon as uh, Tapu, Coco, Tapu Coco and Snorlax. It was his lead and they never left the field. As we do see a Braviary and Garchomp, so he did decide to bring the Braviary again as a lead, and Daniel did not change anything up besides the position of his Pokemon on the field. So we will see the Electric Surge come up, bringing the Electric Terrain, and also Tapu Koko's Electric Seed to buff his defense. So turn one here, looking at Justin's side, we don't know if his Garchomp is Scarf, but if it is, a Scarf Earthquake 
and getting that fast earthquake off but Coco's defensive boost probably won't knock it out and Braviary could possibly get a tailwind if he's not scarfed so we'll have to see if Snorlax switches for Daniel and brings in Arcanine to get the Intimidate off on both of his Pokemon bringing their attack stage down by one Tapu go goes straight for the Thunderbolt and it, ooh, Braviary lives with its Focus Sash. So Garchomp does go for the Earthquake, which is going to do super effective damage on both of Daniel's Pokemon. But Arcanine eats a Berry, which we're assuming reducing his Ground-type damage. And Arcanine minus one after the Shuka Berry takes possibly nothing from that Earthquake. As you do Ar see Arcanine take a good amount of damage from the Braviary, bringing it down to 8 HP. So Justin made a good turn there with the Earthquake and double target into the Arcanine slot. Interesting not to see a Tailwind there because Coco's still the fastest thing on the field. So maybe he will see a Dazzling Gleam here if he has it to pick up a double knockout or a, a knockout on Bravier and good damage on Garchomp. And the Arcanine will probably go down this turn. Here is the Dazzling Gleam. Does close to 50% on the Garchomp, which we still don't know the item of. Likely not Assault Vest, but here we go. We do see the item. It is a Z move of the ground variety. Groundium Z's Tectonic Rage coming out for the Garchomp on Justin's side. As we see who it is going to target, probably the Tapu Koko. Yes, it does, and it will go down to this Tectonic Rage this turn. So, Justin trades, or essentially, Bravery for Coco this turn, but his Garchomp does get burned. So that's going to hurt his attack stat, as is, it is well intimidated. So essentially, this is a minus three attack Garchomp right now. Both of them are in pretty good position. I'd say Daniel is still higher board position right now as the Garchomp is burned, but his Arcanine does have low HP, so it'll probably go down next turn. See with both Pokemon release here, it looks like Justin is deciding as Daniel locked in. We did see the Snorlax on his side, and we will see it again at full health. And here comes the Kartana. So Arcanine is the second slowest thing on the field right now so either one of Justin's Pokemon will target it and take it out if they want to so Arcanine is not really a threat to him right now and the Snorlax might take some damage here from a Sacred Sword possible from the Kartana. The match was forfeited so did Dan Daniel looks like he forfeits here um I, I guess he knew something that I didn't know and thought he couldn't win this game seeing what came out on the field so we had two quick forfeits in the first two games of this round so we're back to 1-1 one, one here As we see them jump into an important game three here in Switch Round Three, because at a midseason you want to win these games early, you know, to go 3-0, 4-0, 5-0. Because when we get to the sixth and seventh round, those are going to be your toughest matches. And we do have 69 masters here with a total of almost, I think, 90 players at this midseason. So there is seven rounds of Swiss, and there is only going to be a couple X twos that make cut. So losing early is never ideal. And both of these players would like to start 3-0. As we, once again, we see their teams, Daniel at the bottom of the screen with Tapu Koko, Tapu Fini, Garchomp, Arcanine, Mimikyu, and Snorlax. Justin has Braviary, Garchomp, Kartana, Arcanine, Tapu Fini, and Snorlax at the top of the screen here in Game 3. We have not seen the Mimikyu or the Fini from Daniel, and we have not seen the Fini or much of 
the Snorlax on Justin's side. He did bring the Garchomp last last game, so maybe he didn't bring the Snorlax. And he has locked in relatively quickly, so we could see the uh, same type of approach here for Justin with the Braviary Garchomp. And Daniel might have to make an adjustment here as he locks in. And here we are getting started with Game 3. And here we do see Braviary Cartana lead. Beautiful blue bird that we have on Justin's side. And a double Tapu lead here from Daniel. As the Electric Surge goes up, which is going to activate his Electric Seed that we know of. And is Tapu Fini carrying the Misty Seed as well? We don't know. We will shall find out right now as the Misty Surge comes up. No Misty Seed come out for Daniel. So again, we have Coco being the fastest thing as it usually is on the field. We know that Kartana is not Choice Scarf because we've seen Detect. Uh, Braviary is holding the Focus Sash. So Feeny is in a rough spot right now with the Kartana out there because there's no easy way to KO that Kartana right now for Daniel. As we do see Tapu Feeny switch into the Snorlax. Did Justin predict this with a Sacred Sword? Ooh, Tapu Coco goes for a Hidden Power. Super effective, which could mean it is HP Fire and picks up the knockout on Kartana. That's a big knockout, but now Justin gets a free Tailwind up and gets a free switch into whatever Mon he wants to bring in, which could be that Garchomp to get a Tectonic Rage, and there it is. Now he's the fastest Mon on the field, and Coco, we haven't seen Protect from it yet. We have seen Thunderbolt and Roost and Dazzling Gleam and Hidden Power, so we actually know it does not have Protect. So we could see a switch here from the Coco. I do not know if it is EV'd to live a Tectonic Rage at plus one defense. It looks pretty healthy with this HP stat being relatively high for a Tapu Coco. So it'd be interesting if Daniel maneuvers this into, I don't know, maybe, I don't know what he wants to take a Tectonic Rage. I mean, we've seen the Feeny. I doubt the Arcanine wants to take that. So we'll see. And he's just going to take the Tectonic Rage to see where he targeted it. And to see if either one of Daniel's Pokemon will live this. If it attacks the Snorlax, I believe that will live. But a Coco, it's going to be something we'll have to find out. And it does take Coco down into the Earth with Tectonic Rage. And it does pick up the KL with, pl through plus one defense. So Daniel, I guess, was okay with losing his Coco. And Braviary does a return into Snorlax doing about 40% and another facade comes out doing relatively 40% back to Braviary. So I think Daniel might have took a back seat to Justin on board position right now because under Tailwind the Garchomp is relatively scary with uh, no, I mean Tapu Fini has a Moonblast, usually not that invested to take out the Garchomp unless his Tapu Fini is possibly choice specs, we don't know but I don't think the Moonblast will KO. So we might see a Protect here on either one of Daniel's Pokemons to try to stall out Tailwind. We don't know if Garchomp is... And Garchomp actually goes for a Protect. And Daniel does not look happy. We see a Brave Bird come out. See who he targets. Snorlax, which almost picks up the KO, but look, Snorlax is going to proc its... 50% berry. Probably Figgy. Nope, another I pop a berry. And the Moonblast goes into the Garchomp, and it was probably a double target. It was a double target. So Justin has a good turn there. Gets free Brave Bird damage off on that Snorlax, and I don't think it's going to be able to take one more of those. So Feeny is going to have to do some damage this turn because we don't know if Snorlax has Protect. It could have Recycle to possibly get that berry back, but I don't know if it's going to live possibly two attacks because we should, could see the Earthquake and Brave Bird going into that slot. But it's going to be hard to come back if you're Daniel here. As we do see a Snorlax switch, would it be Arcan... No, it's Garchomp. So whatever is attacking that, if there's a Braver going into that slot, Braviary is going to take some rough skin damage. And a Poison Jab does go into Tapu Fini, which won't poison because of the terrain, but he does about close to 50%. As the Brave Bird 
does go into the Garchomp. Oh, doing a healthy mount with a crit. Bringing it down to 10 HP, so it, that crit might have mattered. And the recoil takes out Braviary. So we get a, a muddy water here from Tapu Fini, assuming that the Braviary would still be on the field. Will he get an accuracy drop? He does get the accuracy drop, which could help him out as Tailwind now ends. So we probably will have speed tie, speed tying Garchomps. Because we both don't know their sets, but most run max speed Jolly. Unless they are the Choice Scarf variant, which we know Justin's is not because it was protecting. And we saw the Ground DMZ. And that crit might have hurt Daniel pretty bad. But I think it also hurt Justin too because the Braviary took more recoil damage than it would have. Oh, Snorlax avoids because of the accuracy drop. His own Pokemon avoids. Oh, so Garchomp lost the speed tie in Daniel's end. And that could be a problem, but we will see a taunt go into the Snorlax. Which I don't... And it worked out for him because Snorlax went for the curse. But I think a Moonblast there would have picked up the KO on the Garchomp more times than not. So, I mean, uh, pretty... Justin looks like he's in, in a favorite spot because his Pokemon are healthier, but... Garchomp could go for a simple poison jab into the Tapu Fini. And which he does. Saw no protect come out. It doesn't look like Daniel has any protect on protect on any of his Pokemon. You haven't seen it. And Snorlax goes for a return on Justin's side, which is gonna do a healthy amount of damage. But he's gonna recycle. Don't know if that's gonna be enough to bring him back. And I see just keeps recycling and recycling and recycling, but Justin could possibly do the same with his Snorlax, so we might even see a forfeit from Daniel here because he's in a rough spot because that Snorlax being healthier probably has the 50% berry still on it. So Daniel, after winning game one, might come back and lose this uh, match after we see a poison jab. Does he get a poison? Poison would be big. No poison. And he goes for a curse. He's going to continue to set himself up here. Giving him possibly maybe a win con. If he goes for a curse here, dropping his speed, raising his attack and defense. Both mons on the Justin side are physical attackers, so this might help. But he took a big chunk here, and I don't think the Snorlax on Daniel's side being the slowest mind on the field has enough to recycle here. I pretty much think it's over, and Justin is going to... Oh, Snorlax avoids from the accuracy drop, but the return from the other Snorlax is now faster, and knocks out Daniel Snorlax. So Justin Krubal wins Swiss round three after losing game one. So Justin Krubal, I Magikarp goes to 3-0 is Daniel Thorpe goes to 2-1. Both of them are really good players so we could see them both in top cut. It's unfortunate that they matched so early but they had a good match and it was good for us to see it at Swiss round three. So we are going to take a quick lunch break now probably around an hour Hopefully not that long, and then we'll get back with Swiss round four, five, six, and seven. And I should have a partner here with me, Matt Swanson, as he's on his way over here. So thanks for watching, and thanks for hanging out at the Illinois Mid-Season Showdown.